Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all this within me. Bless his holy name. Come on. Let's not be bored. Let's glorify God. <laughs> Let's bless God. Hallelujah. It's good to be alive in Christ. Amen. Thank God for we've been redeemed. Amen. The price has been paid for us to live right and live honorable before God, to live true and to be a blessing to one another. You know, as I studied the scriptures today, uh, the, the, the command that uh, Jesus Christ gives is to love one another. That's the new commandment he brought, that we would love one another, that we would love God with all our mind, with all our heart, and, and all our strength, that we would love God. So I just want to encourage you guys in that, that as individuals, learn to love the unloved. The ones that persecute you, the ones that talk uh, bad about you, love on them. And, you you know, we're not trying to bring them shame, but they're like, wow, this person is a Christian. You know, they, they, they still love me. They still talk to me no matter what, you know. So that's what we're to do. We're to exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. We're to exhibit what Christ has done in our lives. So I want to welcome you guys that are at home right there on live streaming, you guys that are on uh, YouTube. Welcome. Welcome to our midweek service. We're in the book of Galatians. Amen. Come on. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. You know, uh, uh, I watch people as they clap, you know. I'm like, wow, hey. You know, if it was their boyfriend, they're like, yeah, look at him. If it was his girlfriend or husband, like, yeah, Kobe, yeah. Do it for Jesus. Amen. That we cheer on Jesus and we bless Jesus. For we won't be bored in our faith. Amen. We just continue to bless God and honor God. It's a, a, it's a beautiful life when you allow God to do what he has to do in your life. You know, during the transformation, as you get transformed, it gets rough at times. It gets tough. It, you know, we don't feel like doing things and we're undisciplined people. We just have to learn to be disciplined. Amen. That's all it takes. You know, I make, I make a statement and I do it on purpose. And sometimes we don't need prayer. We need discipline. You know, a lot of people, oh, I need prayer, I need prayer. No, you just need to discipline yourself. You know, if you got diabetes, cut out the bread and the tortillas. You know, cut that stuff out because then you won't need prayer. You know, oh, I need prayer, my sugar's high. Why is your sugar high? Because you didn't listen. Amen? We, we got to stop all that stuff. You know, I got high blood pressure. Well, quit eating out so much and stay at home and eat. Because all food outside is high in salt, right? Because they got to preserve it. So we got to use the wisdom of God. So I just want to encourage you guys as we get into Galatians, because I'm taking off somewhere else, <laughs> uh, uh, to be blessed. And I pray that the Spirit of God would just anoint your ears and anoint your heart, that uh, you would hear what the Spirit of God is saying. And we would not just be hearers of the word, but we would be doers of the word. Amen? That's when wisdom takes effect. When we do what the word says, it's, you know, it's not just the wisdom of the word of God. It's when you do it that you walk in wisdom. Amen? Because it's easy to quote. It's easy to read. But to live is a whole different thing. And it becomes easier as you practice it, as you get better. You know, if you do wind sprints, you'll get better. You'll get faster as you do them. That's a long time from now, but, you know. When I get to heaven, I'll be doing wind sprints again in Jesus' name. So we're going to open up in prayer, and then we're going to worship God. We're going to love on God. Remember here at Turning Point Fellowship, guys, you're open. You're open to raise your hands. You're open to give a shout, a hallelujah, glory. If you sense the Spirit of God working in you and calling you to the altar, obedience, come to the altar. You know, you may not know why. Why does he want me at the altar? He may be changing something in you. He may want to grant you the freedom you've been looking for, the liberty and the spirit you've been looking and searching for. He wants to give you that. He wants to give you the desires of your heart. And some of you, you know, you need to be open. You, your personality. You guys are friendly people. I'm looking at everybody here. You're friendly people. Let the Lord use you. You know, Father, teach me to be friendly. Teach me to be happy and not sad. You know, I don't want to listen to oldies all the time because they make you sad, you know. Let's listen to some up-to-beat music or something, you know. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
So we're going to pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for our lives and our salvation, Lord God. I thank you for the spirit of God that lives within each and every one of us here. Lord, and everyone at the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that they come to be changed. That they will not walk in this room or turn on their TV sets or their phones and remain the same. I pray that by the end of the service, through worship, through praise, through interaction, Lord God, with the Spirit of God, that change comes, Lord. And I know that a lot of us, Father, that are uh, elderly, mature, Father, we don't like change. But, Father, change us anyway. Change our hearts. Change our minds. Change the way we speak. Change the way we live, Lord. The way we see things and perceive things. Help us to see it your way. Help us to hear the word your way, Lord God. No longer our way or our will be done, but your will be done, my Father. So I ask that you continue to bless this service at Turning Point Fellowship. Bless the worshipers as they lead us into your presence with praise and thanksgiving. Bless us, Lord, for we come to bless you. We come to minister to you and, and praise and worship. We come to bow our lives and our hearts before you, Lord God. So honor our praise, honor our worship as we ask for forgiveness of our sins. For everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. And we ask, Father, that you forgive us our sins, our foolish talking, our foolish thinking, Lord God, and our foolish ways. We ask. Forgive us, Father. And we ask that you bless this time once again. Ooh, once a time, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's have our praise and worship team in Jesus' name. How is everybody tonight? Are you feeling nice and blessed and refreshed? Yeah. Amen. All right, I have a scripture. It's Psalms 26. It says, I wash my hands to declare my innocence. I come to your altar, O Lord, singing a song of thanksgiving and telling of all your wonders. I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glorious presence dwells. Amen. Oh, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty in this place. I decree that over you guys tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just break Hallelujah. out of our comfort zones and praise, okay? Let's just give him some praise. Let's give him some praise. Shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we just Lord. thank you that we thank get to you, worship Lord. you freely. We just Lord. thank you that you love us, Father God, and we thank you that we get to do this, Lord God. And we just yes, praise Jesus. your holy name right yes. now, Father, right now. Praise you, Lord. Lord, you're good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good, Lord, you are good and, and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People of every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you. Who you are, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you. Who you are, you are good. 
Come on, shout hallelujah. Give him a praise. Exalt the name of Jesus. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and, and your mercy endure it forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. I said, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. People from every, people from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. You are great. Come on, put your hands together. There you go, shout it out. He's so good. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time, you are good, you are good, all the time, all the time, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. Say, Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure it forever. People from every from every nation and tongue, from generation to generation, we worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you, who you are. We worship, we worship, we worship, we worship you.
stop, never stop you working. Never stop working. Come on, church, he's moving on your behalf. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it. Even when I can't feel a thing. Even when I don't feel that you're you working. Never stop, never stop working. You never stop. You never stop.
worship the Father. Worship Him.
God is up to something. God is doing something. Amen. Just let him do it. Let him do it. Dios está haciendo algo ahora. Ahorita mismo Dios está haciendo algo. En este momento Dios está haciendo algo. He's up to something. He's checking our mind. He's checking our hearts. He's checking our lives. He wants to bless you so, so richly. He wants to bless you so kindly that you would just let him. Say, Lord, bless me as I bless you. Lord, bless me as I bless you, Father. Let him bless you. Let him bless you according to his will and according to his word. Whatever you need. Do you need strength to overcome something? Ask God for that strength. Remember that where you're weak, he is strong inside of you. favor for a job or promotion ask God for his favor if you need healing right now receive your healing receive the healing that God has for you if you need salvation let, let God save you and I'm not talking about eternal salvation because that's yours but you need to be saved from something even yourself we got to get saved from our own self. We're our worst enemies at times. The way we speak to ourselves. The way we speak to other people. Our heart is shown in that. For everything that proceeds from the mouth comes from the heart. And they can say I'm kidding, but it already came from the heart. So whatever you need right now, right now God is up to something. Right now, God is doing something. If you let him, he'll change your life. Your past will go in Jesus' name. It'll leave you your past. God will heal you. God will heal your relationship. Your relationship with your wife, with your son, with your children, with your mother, your father. God will heal you. Do you want that? Let God heal you. Let God bless you. God is doing something brightly in your life right now. God is doing something in you right now. Let him do it. Just say, finish it, Lord. Say, finish it. That's all you got to do is just... Use the scriptures, the good work you begun in me, Father. Finish it to the day of Jesus Christ. Let me not grow tired in doing good. For in due season, I know I'm going to reap what I have sown. That's the word of God. So sow good seed. Sow some good seed out there. Kindness and love. Forgiveness and long-suffering. Sow that seed. Remember how long God has been patient with you. Remember how good God has been with you. Amen. Remember that. How kind God has been to us. We're poets and he's still kind to us. Amen. Don't let your past or things hang you up from worshiping God and blessing God. People at home. Worship God in your living room, in your car, your workplace. Don't be ashamed to worship God. Because you know the scriptures. If we're ashamed of God before man, he's going to be ashamed of us before him and his angels. Let's not be ashamed. We're here in his house. Lift up your hands if you have to. Lift up your voices. Even my worship team, lift up your voices. Praise God. Bless God. I'm not ashamed to say I'm a Christian. I don't want to fit in with the world. I fed, I fitted in at one time with the world. I don't want to do that no longer. I didn't win nothing. I was
was ministering to a young man today, and I told him, the world it wants to kill you. It wants to destroy you. Because the enemy, the father of this world, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But God, who is the God of a kingdom we live in, he wants to bless your life. He wants to sing happy birthday to you every day. He wants to celebrate you every day, not just this day, every single day. He wants to celebrate you. Let him celebrate you. Don't be, oh, I'm shy. Now forget all that noise, because I don't see one shy person here. There's not one shy person here. We love the Lord. Let him know. Si uno ama a Dios, dile, yo te amo, Dios. Tú eres mi padre. Tú eres mi Dios. Tú me traes gozo. Tú me traes las fuerzas que es necesario para vivir esta vida. He gives you the strength to sustain and overcome. You're here today. Imagine that. On a Thursday night, Edgar, you're here. That's mind-blowing. Amen. That's mind-blowing. Don't let that stuff scare you. You guys, oh. wait till you hear the real thunder. When he splits the sky and you hear the trumpet. I hope you're not afraid. I hope you say, here it is. Finally, it's happening. The trumpet's blowing. The sky's ripping apart. He's here. My king is here. My hero's here. Jesus. We're not going to run from God. We're going to run to him. It's those that did never received him. Those who don't know him are going to run from him. Because they know what they got coming. But we, Christians, we repented. We changed our lifestyle. We changed our minds now. There's a beautiful anticipation. People there at YouTube and on live streaming, there's an anticipation for God's return, the Son, to return. I don't know if you guys get happy. I look up with an anticipation. Let it happen, Lord. Let it happen in Jesus' name. I want to encourage you guys. Have that anticipation in your heart. He's coming. He's coming. The world is changing. It's changed a lot since I was a kid. For some of you guys that were in the 90s and early 2000s, it's changed already. It's changed, right? It's a trip how, you know, how things are out there. I encourage you guys to stay with Jesus. Love the Lord with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Love the Lord. Tell him you love him. Because it's not about your performance. It's about him. I love you, Lord. And I know you love me back. And the more you say that, the more God's going to change your life. Just to listen, I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Blake, I love you, Jesus. When no one's around, when you're getting in your car... I love you. You're my Lord. You're my God. Maxine, that's what you do. That's what we do. Love the Lord. Amen. Go ahead and have a seat in Jesus' name. We're gonna we're gonna receive our tithe and our offering. Amen. Come on. Get excited. You know, some of you I know don't believe in tithing. Uh, but you can believe in giving. Amen. If you don't believe in tithing, then give. Give your 10%, 15%, 20%. Because the 10% is the beginning. The beginning of what we're to give to God. Give back to God. That's just the beginning. And then we give more. I give way more than 10%. Way more. And I don't lack in any good thing. I have more than enough. I'm talking about joy. I'm talking about love. I got enough love to love all you guys. Amen. That's God's love working in me. Amen. God has given me wisdom how to live a life in Christ Jesus. It's a beautiful thing. Joy, laughter. It's beautiful. Amen. So when you give, give unto the Lord out of a grateful heart. We have the phone number up there, which is 714-477-7736. Come on, adults, you can join me too. It don't just have to be the children. Amen. So one more time, our teenagers, right, the cool people right there, 
7736. So if you uh, text that number, prompt it'll prompt you to go on to another one and just give right there. You can give. We should always come to the house of God ready to give. Ready to give something. Amen to him and just say thank you. Go ahead, hermana.
you go pray for the offering. If you stretch your hands for it, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Well, Father, we come before you, Father God, to thank you, Father God, to declare that you are our God, Father God, and you are, you are everything for us, Father God. So we thank you, Father God, for this tithes and offering, Father God, that we give back what belongs to you, Father God, because if we declare that we don't lack anything, that you are our provider, Father God, that you are our healer, Father God. We're just giving back what belongs to you. And thank you, Father God, for everything you give us. And that our homes will never lack any good thing, Father God. We thank you for each member that they give and they can give, Father God. You bless them anyway, Father God, because you know everybody's heart, Father God. You know the desires of their heart when they want to give something, Father God. So we just thank you, Father God. We thank you for this church, Father God. We thank you for Pastor Angel, Father God, that you keep on giving him the wisdom that he needs, Father God, to handle his money, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for this tithes and offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We'll follow you. our worship team. Come on, let's give them a good round of applause. They do an awesome job. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Don't let no one leave. Close those doors. The air is on now. Everyone's in, I think. You know, latecomers will say, will say, uh, you're late, you're late, you're late, you're late, you're late. Amen. If they walk in late, I want you guys to say all that. On count of three. No. To one of our own, amen, uh, to Brianna Baruch. Come on up here, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. A young lady right here, a handmaid of the Lord. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mija. All righty, on the count of three, you guys want to turn me off? One, two, three, five. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Diviana. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> she wants to say, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise be to God. We're going to go ahead and uh, release our children, our youth. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get excited about our children. I want to encourage the people that are staying at home. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't understand why, but uh, I really don't understand why. Are we on or did we get disconnected? We're on? Okay. Uh, uh, I don't know why, why we're not showing up to Bible study. I really don't understand that. But uh, uh, you should come out. The Bible says to not forsake the gathering of the brotherhood. Amen. Because uh, uh, I see you all over the place, you know. And, uh, but I don't see you at church sometimes, you know. Uh, we should be at church. I think if we're Christians, we should be at church. A drunk goes to a bar. You, you know, am I right? Right? You know, uh, people who live out there in the world, they do the things of the world. We're Christians. Let's do what Christians are supposed to do. Go to church. Study our Bible. Read our Bible. Be friendly. Be nice. Amen? And uh, I just want to encourage you guys to come on out, man. Come back. I know COVID had hit a couple of people, but I thought COVID was over. But I guess it's still out there doing some things, you know. Amen? So, uh, but we overcome that by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Amen, and uh, just declare you're going to live and you're not going to die in Jesus' name. And it's not as worse it, uh, or as bad as it was before, right, when they had all the fear working, you know. So we don't operate in fear. We operate in faith. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, raise them up high. Put them in your right hand if you have your Bibles in Jesus' name. <laughs> Some of you guys don't have your Bible. We should have one. No. Nah. There's a Bible over there. When our usher comes back, he'll bring you a Bible. Amen, over there in the corner, there's all kinds of Bibles over there. Wow. Uh, so uh, do that. Let's do it. 
Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. I don't want to be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of our Father. If you would open up your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5, uh, I'm just going to do a quick review. I do want to get into uh, chapter 6, but uh, like I said many times before, I was, I was uh, instructed by a, an elder in a church. Uh, I'm going to mention his name because he may be watching us, Lee Carmichael, beautiful brother uh, uh, in the Lord that I've known for a long, long time. Uh, he instructed me, what's the hurry, Pastor Angel, when you're teaching the word? He, we'll be teaching the word until we see Jesus Christ. So don't, so don't be in a hurry. Just take your time. I say amen. 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 Praise God. So uh, we're, we're in Galatians chapter 5. And we, we, talk about the, uh, we talked about earlier in this chapter that the love of God fulfills the law. When, when we do exactly what the law, uh, uh, if we do exactly what the love of God says to do, as we're going to read about the, the gifts and the, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, that we fulfill the law. We don't have to try to perform when we walk in love. It's all fulfilled. The prophet saying and, and the law are all fulfilled in that word love. And we're going to learn that today. So if you learn how to walk in love, and walk in uh, the fruit of, of it, of, of love, that it's going to be a good life. You'll have a good life. You'll have a rich life. I'm not saying you're not going to have trouble. You will, but even love conquers all. It conquers your troubles. It conquers the circumstances you're in. It conquers a, a hardship in life. It conquers death. It conquers divorce. It conquers separation. It conquers all that stuff, the love of God. There's nothing greater than the love of God. Why? Because God is love. Love is God. When we operate in, in biblically, when we operate and function correct, correctly, he says the only reason there's wars in the members, the only reason there's arguments and battles is why? Because of the lust of yourself. The fights within yourself. And we want to blame everybody but ourselves. And when you want to get real with yourself, when you really want change, you're going to have to look at yourself. You're going to have to examine yourself. That's the only way you're going to get healthy. You know, they can blame you all they want, but there's something wrong with them too. You know, they want to blame us that, you know, this is wrong with you and you do this and you do that. There's something wrong with you too. And that's why we need that individual relationship with God. We need to have that. It's very, it's vital. It's life. It is life for us who believe. That you come to church. It, it's important. You know, some of you stay home and you're in struggles, you're in battles, you got sickness in your body and this and that. That's when you come to church and you keep coming and you keep coming. But don't just come to come. Come to believe God. That today could be the day it's all over, it's done. Cancer, you know, uh, uh, High blood pressure, uh, uh, sugar diabetes, all that goes. It just goes today. You can walk in and leave another way, amen? But you got to believe that. The lady with the issue of blood for 12 years, she says, if I could touch his hem, I'll be made whole. She believed it. And when she went back home, she was a different person, amen? Barnabas, uh, Barnabas the, the blind Barnabas, he, he sat there, but he cried out, Son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, he cried out to the Lord. He didn't just sit there. Everyone else was sitting there. He was yelling and shut up, be quiet. He's not listening to you. Yes, he was. God was listening. God healed him and forever changed his life. You, here real quick, you know when Barnabas had that beggar's coat on, you know what he did with it? He threw it off. When he went to Jesus, 
Because he believed, I believe that he believed, I'm not going to need this no more. I'm not going to be identified by this cloth no more. I'm going to be identified by a new man who I am in Christ. And Christ did just not give him his sight. Christ made him whole. Christ gave him his whole life back. He was able to work. He was able to go visit people that he couldn't visit. He was able to walk again without somebody guiding him or leading him but God. When God does a work in our lives, he does it whole if you would just receive it. He wants to heal you completely. And just because we're ministers doesn't mean we don't need Jesus. We need some work too. Every one of us, if we would just be real with God, if we would just be honest, every one of us, if you would just tell God your shortcomings, uh, your troubles. Uh, a young man called me and he said he had an anxiety attack at his job. He said he had to run out because he goes, it was just tripping. It was blowing my mind. He goes, and I had to go to the hospital. And I said, you need peace. You're thinking too much. And a lot of us that have anxiety, that have worries, that carry our cares, it's because we're carrying them. We have worries because we carry those worries about our children and their children and our husbands. Don't carry that. Give that to the Lord. Don't think you're going to put too much weight on God. If you think that, then you don't know my God. He can take care of all that stuff, but you got to just give it to him. I give you this sickness. I give you this disease. I give you this lack in my life that I don't have enough money, whatever it is. I give it to you, Father, because I know that you're the God that heals. I know you're the God that delivers. I know you're the God that provides. I know this. I believe this. I trust this. And if we do that, then we should be living in that order. Really, we should. We shouldn't be tripping and showing our, you know, our, our poochy faces and, you know. God is good. He is? Yes, he is. Uh, as I was worshiping God, as I, I was worshiping God, he says, I never changed, angel. I never changed. When you were in trouble, God didn't change. God changed you. When you were doubting and disbelieving God, God didn't change. God stood the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His word changes not. This word is going to be the same. If you backslide, if you go back to doing whatever you're doing, this word is not going to change. If you have troubles and doubts and disbeliefs, this word is not going to change. You change. You walked away from God. God didn't walk away from you. God is still standing there because he said, I will not leave you nor forsake you. But he's waiting for you to call on him. And a lot of people don't call on the name of Jesus. We need this. I'm going to give you something God gave me just the other day as I was meditating. He says, Angel, don't you know that the spirit of God lives within you? Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit? And I said, I do. He says, so you got to watch what you look at because I'm with you. You got to watch how you speak. Because I'm with you. You got to watch how you listen because I am with you always. Are we making God ashamed by what we look at? What we see, what we, what we talk about and who we talk about? Uh, is God, oh my God, I can't believe this. I'm hearing this. I'm seeing this. And we talk about that stuff. And we say we're Christians and God lives in us, but we're living like the world. We can't. Because he lives inside of you. So everything you do, everything that you look at, he's looking at with you. Whatever you're looking at TV, whatever you're looking on your phone, saying hi to that, to that girl that ain't your girl. Yes, I like. Christian girls showing all their puppies and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, that's a Christian. Showing her stuff out there. Really? That's not good. And I know I'm going to get in trouble with that. I don't care. I don't care. Certain way we should dress as Christians. Men and ladies, men too. Certain way we should do it. God is looking at us. He's inside of us. The sister sings, you know, Stephanie sings that God is up to something. 
God is doing something right now, not next week, not two minutes from now, not, not five seconds from now, right now. This very moment, God is doing something in our lives if we just, but you have to allow him to do it. And you know what you need. You know where the knife needs sharpening at. You know where you're dull at. You know this. I know this in my life. Well, we're dull. We need Jesus, people. And my call as a pastor is to build your faith and your confidence in God, your trust in God, that you will last until the end. You will last until you see Jesus Christ. Because if you're not careful, the Bible says that the very elect will be deceived. The people that are chosen of God to serve and to honor will be deceived. We're not to do that. I'm speaking to every one of us in this room and everyone that's on TV or live streaming, whatever you guys call it. I don't know what it's called, but I call it TV. You know, amen? God is speaking to us. And he wants you to finish the race. Keep your faith. Win this. Run through that tape. If you never ran through a tape before and took first place, you can do it now in Christ. If you were never victorious in your life, you are now. You are now in Christ. I, I, I read some stuff on and people, people aren't saved yet. They won't be saved until they see Jesus Christ. People write that stuff on Facebook. I'm like, oh, my God. I thought it was by faith that we're saved. Amen? Through the grace of God. Through the grace of God, we're saved. And that's why we got to learn how to last. we got to learn how to endure. A lot of us are quitters. Look at the church. It used to have all kinds of people. Where are the people? Where are they? Oh, because I'm a church pastor, I'm a quitter. No, I'm not saying that. But why aren't you in church? That's what I'm saying. Where all the brothers and sisters used to tell me, I'm with you, pastor. I got your back. Where are you? Got my back way back there, I guess. You know? You don't have my back now. It, it, it trips me out as a man of God. It blows my mind, if I can say that. What happened to your faith? You were excited. You were on fire at one time. You would dress up for church. You know, and how chanclas are being worn and all this and that. All. Casualty. Casual lives bring casualties. When we're casual in our experience with God, our relationship with God, be on fire. Let's go. So I'm going to read all the way to the end here. Uh, uh, Galatians 5, uh, let's go... Uh, uh, what did I give you, mijo, from 19 to 26? Okay, let's do that. Now, Paul instructs us uh, from 16 to, to 18 to walk in the spirit that, we, that you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another. So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. We're to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. When you blow it, does God tell you you blow it? Do you hear that? You blew it. Do you hear that, Ray? I hear it. Do you hear it, man, when you blow it? Like, what are you doing? You're blowing it. Do you hear that, Tony? I hear it all the time. And I'm a minister. I'm a preacher. I'm a pastor of a church. And you hear it even in your thought when you think foolish things that you shouldn't be thinking on. Really, Angel? You're going to think about that? And you're like, oh, wait, my God. I forgot he can read my thoughts. Right? Because he can read you. So we have, to, we have to be led by the Spirit of God. And if there's anything you did to offend God, to sin against God, I'm sorry. I repent. And repent means to turn away from it and change your life. Think different about it. Amen? And, yeah, I'm saying this, and I know that, I've, I've said this before, but how many times have I told my kid to take out the trash? You know, how many times have you asked your kid to take out the trash, make up his bed or her bed? I'm saying him because I have a him still at home. You know, 
It feels good to make up your bed, to be honest with you. If you make up your bed every day, it's just something. I don't know. For me, it's something. It just makes me feel good. Then it makes me want to take out the trash. Then from there, I want to sweep the kitchen and sweep the floor. You know? Exactly. And then from there, I want to do a load of laundry. Because I just got moving. My bed's made up real nice and neat. It's just something about making that bed that just pushes you to the next one. And it's a good thing. Amen? Amen. Now the works, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh. He tells us how the flesh operates. I want you to know that. And if we're living this way, let's repent. God ain't going to uh, punish you unless you don't repent. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is witchcraft, hatred, hating your brother and raising your hands to God. What kind of stuff is that? Not forgiving your brother and, you know, and you want God to forgive you. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Matthew 18 tells us if you don't forgive, then God... Our Father will not forgive you. Amen? Uh, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath means anger. Selfish ambitions, it's all about me, myself, and I. All selfish. Every story, me, 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 I, I, I. We got to stop that. Amen? Dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness. Rivalries mean partying and orgies and all this kind of stuff. And the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in past time. See, Paul is reiterating himself over and over to the church, as pastor does to this church, Turning Point Fellowship. I have to tell you guys over and over, because some of us aren't doing what God is asking us to do. Amen. Thank you, sir. God, uh, some of us are not doing that. We're doing what we want to do. I should have got an amen from everybody. I should, amen. We're doing what we want to do. Okay. I'm going to preach right here. To people who are saying the truth right here. Uh, it's, uh, let's see. Uh, beforehand, so just as I told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's a trip that we sit here and we ask God for certain things, but we're, we're living in sin deliberately. And it's all these things right here. It's not just one. It's, it's, it's a mixture of all these that will keep us away from God. What separates you from God? Sin. That's what separates you from God. God wants to have a relationship with you. Just like if you we're parents, you know, you guys are, most of you guys are parents here. If your kid is not doing what you, you know, she doesn't do what you want her to do, you know, back in her teenage days, you know, like, girl, I don't even want to talk to you. I asked you to do something, and now you're going to disrespect me, and you want me to, you know, lend you a hundred bucks? Are you crazy or what? You know, amen. <laughs> She's saying, no, not me. <laughs> amen. It, but here we are. The fruit of the Spirit is love. That's the, that's the fruit is love. And then these are all those little things I tell you. I don't know what they are. The little parts of the oranges, everyone after you peel it. What are they called? Those little sections or slices? A wedge. There it is. I've been looking for that word for a while. I've been saying that for you guys ain't answering. I'm, like, I'm looking for a word and you guys are like, oh, oh, oh. Wedge. Yeah, they're wedges. And that love is the orange. The wedge is all the fruit that is produced by love. When we walk in the love of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, when you allow the Spirit to use you like a love machine, love machine, amen? <laughs> when you allow the Spirit of God to use you as a love machine, not a lust machine, a love machine of God, Amen? You, you'll bear these fruits. And now tell me if you recognize some of these fruits that are in you. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. I got joy. Who's got joy? Yeah. You know, peace. Long suffering. No matter what is done to you, you still know how to suffer. You know how to go through it. Amen. They're ugly. They're mean. But you suffer. Amen. Uh, uh. Kindness, 
No amens right there. <laughs> I not get one amen. Ain't somebody kind in here? Amen, Brother Ray. Bobby's kind, she's saying. Amen. Nobody else. We got two, three. Brenda back there. Amen. Kindness, goodness. That we would show goodwill toward our brothers and our sisters. That's what he's talking about. Thinking of others more than you of yourself. When's the last time that happened? You know, did you invite somebody to lunch and you're not looking for them to pay for it? I got it. I got it. Mom and dad don't have to pay for it all the time. Dig in your pockets, man. And I got mom and dad, you know. Mm, no amen right there either. Faithfulness. Isn't that beautiful when, when people say you're faithful or God tells you you're faithful? I heard that in the prophecies up north when I was up there ministering. They came and told me, you know, you've been faithful to God. I'm like, who in the heck is faithful to God? Who in your heart, he told me. Maybe not in, in your lifestyle, certain things, but in your heart, you're faithful to God. God knows you're faithful to him. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. That God knows your faithfulness and he blesses you for it. Gentleness. What about being gentle? That's why we're called gentlemen. Because we're gentle men. We know how to behave. We know how to treat a woman. You know how to treat your fellow man. You ain't got to be all machoed out, machoed out. You don't have to be the tough guy no more. Cut that stuff out. That's dead already. That man is dead. You're a new man in Christ. So be gentle. Edgar, be gentle. Amen. There you go. I am. Praise God. Amen. Self-control. You got to learn how to control your tongue. Learn how to control your thoughts. Oh, I can give him a piece of my mind. That's why you got a little mind now because you gave it all away. Learn how to control your thoughts. Because there's some things we want to say, Blake, right? But I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm just going to be quiet. Amen? Yeah. A lot of men are like that, ladies. You think you got them controlled and all that, and you're the boss. You're not. The men are, are using scripture, self-control. Because they know how they can be. They can out yell you. They can get louder than you. They can. He's little, but he's a little... Tough chihuahua right there, baby. You know I mean? <laughs> Little pet bull right there, man. So self-control is, 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 is what we're supposed to be part of. Amen. You should be able to control your thoughts. You should be able to control your mouth. You should be able to control your actions. We as Christians no longer react. We respond. Reaction is over. Reaction will get you in trouble. He says something to you. And, oh, oh, I'm just going to be quiet. Got to learn how to put your hand over your mouth and you'll help the solution. Remember that song by the Temptations? Uh, uh, Ball of Confusion? Oh, sheesh. That was, that was back in the day, Temptations, back in the 60s and early 70s. Remember that, Sister Martha? Yep, exactly. We remember it. And he would say, put your hand over your mouth because you'll help the solution. This ball of confusion. You know, and we got to learn to do that. That's a discipline. And maybe you got to do it out like this for a couple of times. And he's going to say, say it, say it. Come on with it. Come on, say it, say it. No, don't say it. And she may say it and follow you around. Say what you're going to say. Say what the, No, no, no. I'm going to be quiet and, and respect that. He's learning. She's learning. We're learning the ways of the Lord. Everything doesn't have to be a bickering. Everything doesn't have to be a fight, even especially with your children. We sit there and fight with our children, a six-year-old, seven-year-old. Now, who looks funny doing that? You got a 50, 60-year-old man arguing with his eight-year-old grandsons, nine-year-old grandson. People are probably looking at him like, wow, that's strange. This guy's arguing with his kids. We didn't get to argue with our parents. I know that. They were always right. Even when they were wrong, they were always right. Amen? Verse 24. 
And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh. It means we died to, to the, to the uh, natural nature of the flesh that wants to sin. And with his passions and his desires, we, we died to all that. Can I get an amen? amen. And, you know, as, as he's talking here, all these works of the flesh deal with sexual sin. I'm going to give you guys some scriptures for, to back it up. 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20. It's dealing with the, the sexual sin, the, the, the lust of this flesh. It wants to do wrong. This flesh wants to sin. But we got to learn to control it. No, not today. In Jesus' name. Then we got to be smart too, Julie. We got to, okay, I can't go over there. Those are my comadres, and I know how they act. I know how they, you know. I'm going to end up talking about a sister in the church. And then when I say, oh, hey, sister, how are you doing? Wow, how hypocrite we can be. We're not to live like that. I want amen. Praise God. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be conceited or provoking one another, envying one another. We're not to do that. You're not to walk around all haughty. You're not to provoke one another and tease one another and egg one another on. You're not to do that stuff. If you do that in your marriage, you're going to pay a price. If you're going to do that in a relationship in Christ, you're going to pay a price. We're not to do that. We're to encourage one another. Can I get an amen? Uh, uh uh, no, no, uh, no, uh, one another, envying one another. We're not to envy one another. We're to encourage one another. If that brother gets to use the pulpit, praise God for him. If he's a teacher, praise God for him. Oh, man, I can teach better than him. That ain't what it's about. We're not in competition. We're here to complete one another as Christians. Amen. We're to complete. We're to offer help. How can I help you? For you that know the word of God, we should encourage these young men. You ladies that are experienced in life, you should encourage these young ladies how to live their lives, how to conduct themselves. You see them with their hot pants on and their little mini skirts. No, 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 no. You shouldn't come to church like that. Little spaghetti straps and they're showing all their business. No, no, that's not the way we come to church. You know, you should be able to tell them that. And you men, too. You know, they wear these tight T-shirts, and you want to show your guns and all that stuff, and tight pants, you know. No, 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 no. Don't wear those tight pants. You don't need to do all that stuff. What are you trying to get attention for, you know? Dress in an honorable manner, in a respectful manner. Some of you ladies don't even know who you are and what you are. You're valuable. You're a diamond in the rough. God value, values you, but you got to learn to value yourself. And if you dress like that out there in the world, you know, showing all the goods, and you, you, you're telling the people you don't value yourself. You're easy. You're, have at it. We're not to do that. We're to value ourselves. Even men, too. Value who you are as a man of God. Can I get an amen, church? Okay, we're going to go to 6 now. Chapter 6. Just remember that the fruit, uh, the fruit is a natural outgrowth of our relationship with God. As you, as you grow in your relationship, the fruit should be evident. You may not have all the fruit together yet. But there should be one fruit that tastes good on your tree. I mean, there should be one. And for you that have been in church already for 5, 10, 15 years, you should have a bunch of fruits that's coming out of, you, out of you. Amen? Hallelujah. We're moving and grooving here. We're to bear and share one another's burdens. What I was saying earlier. Someone, you know, mentions to you, you know, man, I barely had enough gas, you know, to make it. Don't stand there. Uh, give them something. Reach in your pocket, your wallet. Hey, brother, I'm going to follow you. On the way home, we're going to stop at the first gas station. I'll put 25 in your car. 
if you can't fill it up, you know, I'll put 20 in your car. Go out of your way to help a brother out, a sister out. Amen? If you got five, ten bucks, here you go, ten bucks, man. I'll keep the five, I got fifteen, you get ten, I get five. You can help a brother out. That ain't going to be the last ten you're ever going to have. Some of you guys act like that's the last twenty or the last fifty you're ever going to have in your life. You act like you never had money before. You give and it will be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Will men hunt you down to give into your bosom? But you got to give. It's better to give than receive, the Bible says. We lost these principles in the church. It's all about self and greediness now. And that's not the word of God. We're to help one another out. Pick up the ticket. Don't, don't sit there, you know. Uh, the ticket comes around and everyone all of a sudden got alligator arms. Pick it up. Amen? I got it. I love Brother Hugo. That brother will go get up, act like he's going to the restroom, and go pay the ticket. And I'm like, mm. Me and him fight for it, you know, at times. We fight for the ticket. He fights to pay for me. That's a beautiful thing. And there's some people that wait for you to, all right, pastor's here. He's going to pray for everything, you know. Well, let's all do it together. Amen? I don't mind. If I have the money, I'm going to pay it. If I don't have the money, then I'm waiting on you. <laughs> I'm going to pay, man, no matter what. So, brothers, if a man is overtaken in trespass and sin, you who are spiritual, you who are mature, restore such a man in the spirit of gentleness. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. We're not to talk about the brother. We're to pray for the brother. And don't go telling people his business. We're to encourage the brother. You're to lift him up. He's hit bottom. Help him out. Help a brother out. Lend a hand. Lend your shoulder and let him lean on you. We got to learn how to lean on each other. Learn how to be a blessing for one another. Can I get an amen? amen? So if you find a brother who's overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual. Yeah, you quote a lot of scripture and you can do this and do that, but will you help a brother out? Will you help a sister out? You got more than enough. Talking to a brother today, he's like, we're throwing away food. He goes, the food that only was touched 20% of it. 80% of the food is there, and we're throwing it away after three, four, five days. We as Christians doing that stuff. Bring it to church, man, and put it out. We'll eat it, you know. I know I will. You put it in that refrigerator, I'm going to eat it. Amen. So here we go. Uh, verse 2. Bear one another's burdens, so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? Love, exactly, it's love. Go, go here you know, uh, uh, to Matthew. Go to Matthew uh, uh, 22, 36 through 40. Christ's law is that we love. And when you love, you fulfill the prophets and you fulfill the law. And we got to learn, we got to ask God, teach me how to love. Amen. All of us need how to learn how to love. We got to learn, learn to love a lot more. As we grow, the new people that are coming in, we got to love on them. Maxine is back. Love on the sister. Don't ask her, where you been at, girl? You know, where's that band you were with? No, none of that stuff. Sister, thank you for being here, man. Show some appreciation. It's good to see you again, man. I'm here. Here's my phone number. We're not just all talk. We're, we're doing some stuff about it. Amen? He says, teacher, which is the greater commandment uh, uh, of the law? The Pharisees are asking Jesus this. Jesus said this. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That's a new commandment he brought. He brought that to the people. And then he says this. This is the first and great commandment. Now, the second is like it. You shall love, stay right here for me. You shall love your neighbor, uh, uh, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Who hates themselves here? Now, sometimes we can think bad about ourselves, but we don't hate ourselves. That's why we dye our hair, and that's why we put on makeup. That's why we iron our shirts and buy ourselves some nice shoes and sandals and stuff like that. Amen? You know? Because you love yourself. Get the hairdo, you know? Because you love yourself, right? You want to look your best. Can I get in? There's nothing wrong with that. As long as we're not going around kissing ourselves or kissing the mirror, I, I see that, you know. You guys ever see that on Facebook where the janitor, because the young high school girls are kissing the mirrors, they put on their lipstick and, and there's all kinds of lipstick and he has to clean it every day. And they're, they're in there one day, they're in there uh, uh, using the restroom, not using the restroom, but they're in there standing looking at themselves. And you know what he does? He gets the mop and he's... He, he, he uh, I don't know how to say it. He rinses the mop out, and he puts it on the mirror. And they're all looking like that. Then he gets a towel, and he starts wiping it real clean. And they're like, oh, my God. He did that for they would, for they would stop doing that. Like, ugh, I've been kissing that mirror, and he's got <laughs> dirty dirt all over. <laughs> so he stopped them. The same thing with us. Stop kissing yourself in the mirror. Quit taking so many selfies, man. I'm like, oh, my God. Some of these guys are gangsters, and they be taking selfies. I'm like, oh, my God. What school do they go to? I, you know, that ain't the school I'm from. You know, but then you got your babies, and, you know, I'm taking a picture with my baby. You know, but your baby's in the background, and you're first. Well, what about the baby being in the front? No, no, it's about me. Cut that stuff out. Amen? Once in a while, once in a while. So the second is like this. Love, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments hang on all the law and the prophets. So when we do these two commandments, we fulfill the law. And the law is, the, is not for the righteous. You're righteous before God. The law is not for you. You already know what to do. You're living it already. It's for the sinner. It's for the disobedient, the law is. To show them, what is the law to do? Show us our sin, right? That's what the law is for, that you, you sin, you mess up. We repent, and let's come under the grace of God and not the law of God. And you'll live an easier life when you allow, when you allow grace to take you over when you allow grace to lead you and, and guide you and instruct you. The grace of God. If you guys just knew the beauty of God. To follow his instruction. It's a beautiful thing. He's not going to lead you in wrong. He's not going to lead you in a mischievous way or in, in an awful way, a bitter way. He's not going to do that. Whoever's leading you like that, they're wrong. They're missing it. I don't care if it's a man behind a pulpit. He's missing it. We're to do it in love. I love you guys. That's why I come out and hug you guys before the service. And now I were more, so I got to come out now with 20 minutes instead of 10 minutes now. Because I want to hug you guys. I want to say hi. I love you guys. And I want you guys to know that you're loved. But most of all, I want you to know that you're loved by God more than this man. God loves you more than you even can even imagine or think or even ask. He loves you. You just got to learn to love. Love on me, Lord. Teach me to love. Not just the man I'm with, but everyone around me. Your faith is only great as the per as great as is the person you dislike. That's how great your faith is. Because if you see somebody and you dislike them and you can't go up and say hi to them, you know, or, or befriend them, that's how great your faith is. That's a hard word, but it's a true word. You got to be able to love your enemies. You got to be able to pray for them. You do. I, pastor has enemies. People have done me wrong, done me dirty. My friends. I never got hurt by a stranger. I don't care what a stranger thinks. They have nothing to do with me. Who hurt you? People you love. Amen? 
The people that are close to you, they're supposed to be right next to you and walk with you and encourage you. Those are the ones that hurt you and damage you. And you still have to pray for them. You tell God, you know, I don't want to, thank you. You tell God, oh, I don't want to pray for them. Then you can't be my disciple. Because we got to learn how to forgive as disciples of Christ. This is a disciple class. That's what's happening right now. People ask me about this. You know, what are you doing? I say, we're studying the Bible. We're teaching the Bible. It's a discipleship class. Because they'll say, do you have a discipleship class? Every Thursday night. If you're understanding what the Spirit of God is doing. A lot of people have services. And I talked to a man yesterday. He's thinking about coming here. He says, every, every Thursday we have a different teaching. Every Sunday it's a different teaching. And it's hard to, to settle in that. It's hard to grow in that because there's so many things. He goes, I know I'm to read my word and study the word for myself and grow. That's your, that's your first objective, to do it for yourself, to grow. To have a foundation under you. For when troubles come, Maxine, you know what? Charlie, I'm not doing that no more. I used to do that. I don't do that no more. Well, yesterday you were doing it. Like I said, I used to. 24 hours is, is my past now. I'm not doing that any longer. I'm not talking like that any longer. I'm not drinking that stuff any longer. Well, it just happened 24 hours ago. That's right. That's the past. 24 hours ago. I'm a new person now in Christ. Today I'm new. God is up to something. God is doing something. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Come on. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Don't forget we have service this Sunday at 10 a.m. I encourage you people out there. I hope you checked in with us, all you that were out there on uh, Facebook land, that you said a hi to us, or you who belong to the church. I hope you checked in that you were here at the church. I should have said that at the beginning. But I hope you guys all check in before we get started. That way your friends and family know where you're at. And hey, let me check it out. I'm, I get phone calls. I get phone calls from people that are looking for a church. I get phone calls to people that need ministering. They don't even come to this church. And I do want to tell them, Arlena, where's your pastor? Talk to your pastor. But that's not my call. God says, you minister to them. And you do. You end up, I end up on the phone an hour and 45 minutes pray, praying for someone, ministering to them, encouraging them, getting them back into the kingdom of God to live upright and live whole and live encouraged. I want you to be bold in your faith. I want you to be encouraged in your faith. You don't lack no good thing. You have the wisdom of God. You have the spirit of God living inside of you. All we got to learn how to do is be disciplined now. Right? Discipline. Live for God. Love God with all your might, with all your soul, and all your mind. Love God. All your strength. Love God. I'm not putting no one in front of God. No more. Today my life changes. Amen? Today it changes. And we could be walking with God for 40 years, and some of you don't think that God changes any, anymore. He changes us, not himself, but he changes us. I knew a man that got married at the age of 90 years old. I knew another man that got married to a 36-year-old woman. He was 72 years old. And I'm like, how in the heck does that happen? I was a single man, you know, and I, I'm like, man, well, when am I going to be married? You know, I said, these dudes are getting married, and they're 90 and 72 years old, man. I'm, back then, I was like 35, you know, like, what's happening with me, you know? But God answers prayers. Amen. Amen. So just believe God. And if you, you know, you want a man, tell God. I want a godly man. I don't want a drunk. I don't want a, 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 a liar, a fibber, a player. I don't want that. I want a godly man. A man who loves you, going to love me. I want a woman that loves you and going to love me. Amen. Amen. And then when your friends are around, don't change your story. Oh, no, I don't need no man. Okay, then. You're two-sided, you know. You do or you don't. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. Let's pray. We're going to have a, a cake for Brianna afterwards. They, 
they brought some cake and uh, things like that. So uh, just get a little piece if you're dealing with stuff, you know, a little piece. <laughs> now, nah, have whatever you want to have. That's between you and God, man. You know what's best. Amen. Father, we love you. We bless you. We thank you for the word, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, the word of righteousness, Lord God, the word of truth. We thank you that this word has been planted in our hearts, good ground, fertile ground. It's the seed of life, your word. And it produces, Father, in spirit, and it produces in truth. We thank you for the fruits of the spirit, love, kindness, gentleness, meekness, Lord, forbearance, Father, long-suffering. We thank you for this, Lord God. We ask that the good work you begun in every one of us here and in our families, our wives and our husbands, Father, we pray that you finish this work, that you complete it into the day of Jesus Christ. I pray for my brothers and sisters that have not been coming to church and Bible study, Lord. I pray that you would speak to them. I pray that you would speak to their hearts and to their minds, that they would not compromise with, with the world. They would not compromise, Father, in their own thoughts, but that they would know, Father, by the conviction of your love and the conviction of the Holy Spirit that they belong here with us, that we're on the same team, Lord. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you speak to them wherever they may be and whoever they may be with, Lord. I pray, Father, for our children that are next door and our youth that are learning of your ways. For your word says to train up a child in the way that he should go. For when he is old or she is old, they will not depart from it. They'll always have it. They won't backslide. They'll just keep on learning, Father, and they'll live for you. They won't live like we did or I did to walk away from you, Lord, and then come back. No. They'll just live for you, Lord God. I pray right now, Father, for everyone here, that no harm will befall them on the way home. No accidents, Father. Uh, no flat tires. Uh, no tickets, Father. Just a safe passage to and from this place. I pray right now that this word, Father, they have hidden in their hearts. That they would read this word over and meditate upon it, Lord God that you would bless them in their own time and you would give them a rhema revelation, a revelation that is just for them about your word. Spirit of the living God, speak to us, instruct us, and guide us. Teach us to love, to love you and to love one another. Teach us, Father. We ask in Jesus' name and all his beautiful people said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Uh, we're dismissed, but we're going to have cake and ice cream. Where are they going to have it at? Out front or right here on the side? Okay. In the kitchen, and then we can have it right there if you want to go through the kitchen after they, uh, they serve them, and you can just go out and have it right there on the lawn, hold up the brick wall and stuff like that. Amen? You know, so. <laughs> Who's going to be serving? Tony and Conte? All right. Tony and Conte will be serving the cake. If you guys, if you ladies or men too. Want help? Oh, we're not done yet. I'm already. <laughs>